right, so my phone is going to be on right now. Um, so we have Robert Vander, who's with the American Museum of Natural History in New York. And his talk is on everything you never wanted to know about plaster. All right. Uh, I guess I want to begin by apologizing for the disparity between uh, the title and what I'm actually going to talk about, and in particular between the abstract that I turned in and what I'm going to talk about. In my own mind, this, this talk has always had one purpose, which was to introduce a new resin to you. Uh, at the time I wrote the abstract in January, I wasn't entirely convinced that we were dealing with a resin. Uh, but now I am, and so I'm, I'm going to talk about the resin as a resin. Uh, one of the colleagues that I teach anatomy with is a really talented sculptor. And this is the first gray clay version of his new sculpture of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and this is the sculptor and the finished bronze casting that was just installed in the New York Historical Society about two weeks ago. Uh, big affair. And during the fall, when I was teaching with him, he was discussing with me the fact that there was, in fact, a third version of this sculpture, uh, intermediate between the clay version and the bronze cast. And it was a sort of pinkish plastic that he had become familiar with and that he liked because it was a little bit harder than the clay and that you could inscribe details into surface details that you couldn't model in the clay. So uh, the name of this stuff is, is aqua resin. Uh, this is their main web page that, that you can all find by Googling aqua resin. Uh, and it clearly declares the outstanding characteristic of this resin, which is that it doesn't contain any harsh chemicals. It's a green product, uh, and, and they want you to understand that uh, from everything that they do in their, in their literature. Uh, these are some of the scenes that they have in their little gallery uh, of projects that have been done with the, this new resin, uh, you know, large museum-scale projects. Uh, that have been accomplished with this stuff. Uh, there are some commercial casting, commercial exhibition producing companies in New York who are into this in a fairly big way from what I can tell. Uh, the resin itself consists of two components, a powder that comes in a bucket and a liquid that comes in a bottle. Uh, if I can guess from their pricing structure, uh, yeah, it actually works. Uh, this is the 8.8 .8 pound, that's about a gallon uh, of the liquid, sells for 79 bucks, and the equivalent amount of powder is, is the 43 pound, five gallon canister uh, for 271. I'm guessing, although I don't know for sure, that that makes six gallons of resin, and uh, if that's true, then this compares favorably with the cost of polyester. Uh, I have tried one cast that I'll, I'll show you here directly and, and for anybody that wants to out in the, in the lobby. Uh, and what I can tell you is that the pot, light, pot life of this stuff is, is advertised as, a, as effectively a, a polyester equivalent. I found that it set a little more quickly than that. Uh, on the shorter plaster side, I was uncomfortable making the, the cast I did because the brush was hardening up. Uh, it also is advertised as, as, as cleaning up with water. And, and I can tell you that it cleans up really nice with water. Uh, not just a little, but, but easily and very cleanly. You know when you look at the brush when you get done, uh, after you've jammed the, the gel coat on, uh, you, you know the brush is clean. It's not going to deteriorate as time goes on. Uh, it, it really cleans up beautifully. Uh, what's in it? Ah, I want to press. Yeah, that should do it. There we go. Uh, this is the material safety data sheet for the liquid component. And you can tell from this that they're not telling you anything <laughs> about what's in it. Uh, no hazardous ingredients. The uh, 
the powder ingredient is a little more revealing, uh, although we've got not one or two or three, but four proprietary ingredients. Uh, the gypsum was, was misled me when I first started off doing this. That's, that's the abstract that I submitted. I was really thinking that this was just a very expensive plaster that they were trying to sell us. And, uh, and, I, and my research suggested that, that uh, they, can make some of, they can make some plaster with some of the characteristics of this stuff. Uh, the sort of key revelation was this stuff. I finally Googled that and tried to figure out what that was. And this is the, the word chain that sort of led me to the, the conclusion I'm presenting here today. The chemical that they list in, in the material safety data sheet is ammonium caseinite. Well, if, if you find out what that is, it's an intermediate product on the way to making casein. Casein is milk protein, dried, purified. It's effectively the, the curds that are dried and purified from uh, curds and whey of cheesemaking fame. Uh, so this is not a, a magic ingredient in any sense. Uh, you can buy it in a health food store as a dietary supplement. Evidently, uh, there are weightlifters who are doing this. Uh, and you can also, uh, it was the basis during the earlier part of the 20th century for a brand of paint called casings, which was a cut above the tempura you all use in kindergarten and a cut below the, the acryloids that uh, have largely replaced, or the uh, yeah, acryloids that have replaced them. Uh, Caseinite, caseinite is a plastic made from casein. It was discovered in, the, in 1897 by a German chemist named Spittlerer, uh, and he patented it in 1898. Uh, so it's, it's been known for a long time. Galilith is a commercial product name that a company in France used for producing artificial stones that went into high-end costume jewelry uh, during the 20th century. Uh, that, is, that is a casein, caseinite plastic. And aranoid is another commercial name for, there we go, for buttons, uh, the uh, uh, English button manufacturer uh, manufactured caseinite buttons for the best part of the 20th century. Most of the buttons, in fact, made in the world were made in Gloucestershire uh, out of this product that they called Aranate, which is actually a caseinite plastic. This is a slide of some of the high-end costume jewelry that was made in the 1920s. It's now available on the internet in sort of a retro market, uh, giving us some indication of what the stability of this material is, uh, that, that almost 100 years after manufacture, it's still being resold on the market. Uh, Spittlerers all kinds of opportunities to say that wrong. Uh, <laughs> patent is, is, is long expired. Uh, and in fact, you can find recipes for making this uh, plastic. Uh, there, there are a dozen of them on the web. Uh, each one of them adds a little bit to what you might know. I started with them, what appeared to be the most legitimate one up there uh, with the with the guarantee that Scientific American has probably actually tried this out and it actually works. You can make this stuff uh, on your own. Uh, the commercial product that is currently available started out uh, and was developed in this aqua, I can't read it from here, aqua-based, aqua, yeah, aqua-based technology was the name of the outfit. Uh, their web page reveals that the, the genius who formulated the, the current recipe is this 
Dr. Domino and his uh, son runs the, the company. It's since been purchased by ADM. ADM is Archer Daniels Midlands, Midland, so they've got uh, big corporate backing behind them right now. As I recall, the web page lists a, uh, a franchisee for this material in, uh, in Calgary already. So this stuff is probably widely available all over the world. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that the, the news is, is out about it yet. Uh, whatever we would want to find out more about how it actually works uh, is being held tightly as, as a corporate secret. Uh, and and I, I don't expect that to change because the plastic that they're marketing essentially is one that had a patented in the in the 19th century and it's long expired. So they're going to continue to to be mum about what's actually in here. Uh, so my conclusion for what it's worth uh, is that there's a new mark, a new resin on the market. Uh, aqua resin is a new casting pla plastic. It's being marketed as a safe alternative to polyesters and, and epoxies for casting specimens uh, based on sort of gallon by gallon comparison. Uh, it seems to be uh, priced favorably with regard to polyester. My own experience is the working time is a little quicker than their advertising and that is more like working with plaster. Uh, cleanup, was, cleanup was a breeze. Uh, it really cleans up nicely. Uh, they're not really telling us what's in this stuff. Uh, my best guess is that aqua resin appears to be a caseinite plastic. Uh, if I'm right about that, that's, that's a big if, of course, but if I'm right about that, then what we know is that uh, then it's going to take color well. Uh, there was actually a paint that, that was based on these proteins, so uh, you can presume that it's going to color well. Uh, the fact that we have baubles made from this stuff that are still in a retro market and still looking in good shape means that this is probably going to be a plastic that lasts long enough for, for paleontological applications. They're not going to fall apart. Uh, I'm worried about, and one of the first things that we'll test on this stuff is whether it's uh, biodegradable. Uh, I, I don't know how we'll test that. Take it out and bury some, I guess, uh, and see what it looks like after six months. But uh, it's probably stable enough for paleontological applications, and it probably is every bit as safe as its advertisers claim that it is. Uh, but, and, and so I want to present it as an option for everybody to, everybody can go out and buy some and see if they like it as much as I do or don't. Uh, I actually have prepared a specimen out of this stuff, uh, made a cast, uh, which we can go out and discuss as time goes forward, or better than that, uh, you can own this specimen uh, because it's going up on the auction uh, at about lunchtime. Uh, and then finally, I guess I've got to give some acknowledgement to especially Frank Porku, who revealed this stuff for me. It's really been fun working with somebody that's this talented. Uh, my little talks over a cadaver aren't as interesting as his little talks over uh, mostly the blackboard. Uh, also, Mark Norell, again, supported my trip here. And my wife has been great for the last couple of weeks because I haven't been feeling too good, and she's made it possible for me not to miss... Uh, miss this opportunity.